Hey everybody, Grandmaster Ben Feingold here with another recap of the day from round six. We're looking at the games of the Jans today. It's Jan versus Jan. Nipom Nishi versus Jan Christoph Duda. Let's go right to the game. A King's Indian attack for white. Fiancadoing and castling. And he decided to play an early d4 instead of playing d3. And uh, white was playing very quickly this game. He played C takes D5 very fast and knight E5. This was his secret illegal preparation. And in this position, Duda thought for quite some time, and the engine suggested a move I would almost never consider, knight to E4, trying to stop white from developing his knight harmoniously. And instead, he took the knight and played knight E4 after that. But now, with the pawn on E5, White can start getting his kingside pawns going. Jan quickly played knight to d2, still in his prep. Knight takes d2, bishop takes d2. Now we have to watch out and make sure we don't lose our bishop. Even if we don't lose our bishop, the pawn storm could be very dangerous for black. Black played bishop c5, pinning the f pawn. Rook c1 attacking the bishop. The idea is if we play the natural bishop b6, Bishop b4 is an excellent move, stopping black from castling, and later we can go to the d6 square, and then we can continue on with our pawn avalanche on the king side. So instead, black played the correct queen e7, king h2, unpinning the f pawn, castles, g4, f4, always play f4, h6 is forced, so the bishop has an escape square. And here the engine thought, Black was doing a pretty good job since the opening of, you know, stopping White from winning that bishop and getting a winning position. It only thought that White was slightly better here. He played queen e1, wants to play queen g3, and continue on with his pawn onslaught. Rook e8, queen g3. And in this position, Judah started to go astray. Um, bishop h7 is the engine move. Um, not letting f5 happen because you can take on e5. And instead he played, I'm sorry, he did play bishop h7. This isn't where he went astray. After h4, he went astray. White's just advancing all of his pawns, having fun. And black needs to get counterplay either with g5 or f6. In this position, the engine wants to play bishop d4, attacking this pawn. White doesn't want to trade pieces, especially since white's trying to do an onslaught against the king. Um, and then after b4, he's making it very difficult to play f5 because his bishop is on d4. And he could play something like a5 and get counterplay. But instead, he played rook a d8 right away, which is a poor move. And after g5, he made the losing move. I'm not saying he lost the game, but he was losing after the next move. He should play king h8, putting it in h, getting off of this file. So if gh, he can also take back with the g-pawn. And instead, he played hg, which is a mistake. The open h-file actually helps white. White can get a queen and a rook to the h-file, and black has to watch it. This position's already winning for white. Black played bishop b4, which is a mistake. The best move is bishop to f5. And we just take and play f5, and white's crushing. Black's bishop on h7 is trapped. White's advances on the king's side are all working. Queen takes b2. And here, Jan missed the most incisive way to win. Rook c3 is the engine move, stopping the queen from coming back and defending. And we're just taking our time. We can play g6 when we feel like it. We don't have to play g6 right away. Uh, we can play rook e3 next move. The queen is out of play. g6 is unstoppable. And this is just a very poor position for black. Instead, he played the move e6, which is also should be winning. g6, takes a piece. Black has a few pawns, but white gets active with the incredibly accurate rook b1, getting his rook to b7 by force, threatening checkmate. Queen f6, that way he doesn't threaten mate, but that was a poor move. Rook takes e2, allowing a very simple tactic. Not sure if he missed it. But rook takes f5. You can't take the rook because queen g7 is mate. So he checked. And if we don't take the pawn on a2, white's just going to be a piece up. And eventually his a pawn should win the game. So he took that 
hoping he could survive the attack, even though white has a lot of pieces attacking, because then white's going to have no pawns. Rook f7 is a brilliant move. He wants to play rook g5 and stop the queen from coming in and then take on g7. Also, in some positions, rook f8 check is winning. He checked. Always play bishop f1. d4, trying to play queen e3 check and trade queens. Rook g5, no trading queens. And here comes rook takes g7. Once I play this move, it's all over. Queen d6 to trade queens. If we trade queens, we still have good drawing chances since this is the only pawn left. Queen f2. Queen, a th queen e3. Queen a3 is actually an excellent try because now if we take the pawn on g7, let's say, I don't know, this way, then queen e3 is actually a draw. Amazing. And the reasoning is funny. If you take and play rook check, I just take on h7, and if you take this, I have e2. Amazing. Threatening the bishop, but also threatening e1 queen. And now white is fighting for a draw, but has it with rook f8, e1 queen, rook to f3, threatening rook h3 mate. And this is actually a drawn position according to the engine. Crazy. Okay, but that's, that's white misplaying and allowing queen e3. Instead of allowing queen e3, where black can probably draw, white just played rook g3 and said, no queen e3 for you. Now the truth hurts because once the queen moves, I'm going to play rook takes g7 and rook g8 check, and that's, that's the end of the, of, of the black king. So in this position, uh, the engine already announces mate for white. If the queen moves off of f8, let's say queen c1, I check, and queen g7 is going to be mate. And if you don't take my rook and play king h7, queen f5, or maybe there was mate with something else. No, queen f5 is right. And then, and then queen takes mate. I thought I missed another mate, but there's many mates here. So instead of losing that way, Duda decided to resign. A very nice win from white. Good opening prep. Um, defense wasn't perfect from Duda, but he was under a lot of pressure. Got in time trouble at the end. And a very nice win from the tournament leader, Jan Nipomnishi, still in clear first with plus three after that win. I hope you enjoyed that game between the Jans. You can watch all my recaps here on YouTube, and you can watch live at twitch.tv slash GM Benjamin Feingold. Bye, YouTubers.